when we tied him at the elimination leader. Wonderful crew. Let's see if they can hold on to first. Let's hop in to game number six. Lucky Spaceman, take it away. Man, oh man, Lucky. We're entering kind of the final stretch here, and we talked briefly a couple of... 20 30 minutes ago of just how you know the first couple of games are getting your footing games three four and five really matter about momentum and games six through eight are like okay you know where you are in the standings you know what's working what's not now you either make the adjustments you make the aggressive pushes or you try to hold on to your spot now is the time so like what what do you see across the field that needs to change for either top teams or are we just kind of in that zone now with a lot of our squads with they're just trying to hold on to their spot in the rankings and hope that nobody comes up from behind them you know what? I saw Gorgor and I squad do good. I think they got like seventh place. So they were up mm -hmm. there. And although seventh place doesn't sound as appealing as like top three in a lobby like this, you know, seventh place is relatively end game in just a matter of seconds that'll get for you from seventh to like even fifth. But. You know, with that being said, I, the teams I really want to pay attention to are Gorgonite and Team Wars. I think those teams are the teams that kind of started heating up around Game 3 for Gorgonite and just right sure. now for Wars. So if they can continue at this pace, you'll see them, you know, staying up there in the top three situation. But not even that, like FIFA. I think FIFA's squad has the potential to continuously, even, you know, rival Diaz's squad. I mean, you saw them. FIFA had, I think, 11 or 12 eliminations. I think they ran into Diaz's endgame, so they didn't get any placement points. But... They definitely had a lot of eliminations last game. That's a fact. So if that team could kind of straighten out their placement points and, and you continue on that path and Gorgonite and Wars keep on the tempo they were just playing at, I mean, we could see a relatively new top three going into the next game. Man, wouldn't that be something to see? With how crazy today's been, with how absolutely up and down outside of Biffle's trio most of these tournaments have been, It'd be awesome to see some different names pop up in that first and second place and really shake up the standings as game six and seven will be as tight as ever game eight the last one we'll have today before our bonus game will uh, really solidify the standings and show us who's in that first place and who's going to earn the majority of this catch but to start shadow wag nick and lovey haven't talked a lot about them today seen them a couple of times but they were of course the first team to take home a victor royale last week with 27 eliminations lovey was the sub he stays in today yeah, uh, you and we'll see how this right? one plays yeah. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can, yeah. I can they'll see. The uh, you know, they've been actually contesting the Soka squad around here near mm -hmm. Mall. So they've been doing great. But also, someone we haven't jumped on in the sense of the early game. We've seen them getting, you know, pushed through around by Tommy's team earlier on. They did some pushing back. It's uh, Knight's team. Looks like they're going to contest uh, Zoo. I have one team on them. That's going to be Chris. Chris down for the count. Looking for two. Looking for Trey and Evan. Yeah, the squad's able to do it. Evan's down now looking for the mm. last one. And you can already hear the calls coming in from Knight. Like, looking, we're looking for Trey. Try to find him out. Check the rooms. Good comms coming in from Knight. And, you know, you mentioned this earlier, Space. is like, you know, referencing Knight. He's not really IGLing, but he's just giving bits of information that his team yeah. might be missing. And I think that's key to have a player play that role in squad. You don't want two IGLs, but just one that's going to give a you know, little, little call outs here and there to kind of, you know, hey, guys, reminder, X, Y, Z, you know? Yeah, look, you can have like a hard IGL, someone like a Tommy, if you want to go classic, someone like a nade shot. Just a really hard IGL, they're going to orchestrate the chaos in the map, give you information, and set up a play. Or you can have a softer IGL, someone like Gorgo Knight, who's going to give you the information prevalent to the moment, tell you kind of where you need to be, but just give you enough info to help you make the most informed decision, and that really highlights aggressive players. Something Gorgo Knight did excellently back in his competitive days, but also in his Warzone career. This is a player who knows what it takes to be a both sides of the coin IGL. GL. But to start, I mean, we saw uh, Evan drop twice. Z Color still fighting for his life. That was a trio that was very close to getting eliminated. And we're right now, we're seeing the investment from Gorgon Knight and company trying to take down this trio. If it pays off, I mean, that's a big team to take off early. It almost looks like an over investment because we now see the shift, the tide of like of how, how that fight went off. It looked like, you know, Night Squad had the player advantage and they were up on kills. But now both Gary and, and Rachel are going to fall right there. And now Knight's the last one remaining. Nope, Gary back up and. So you notice how like the fights will go, right? You'll, you'll clash with the team over and over, but if you lose your footing on just one of the fights, then the, sh the whole tide of the, the fight can just get shifted completely. I think that's a great way to put it. With how many variables are at play constantly throughout these late games, it plays gunfights, rotations, whatever, they can all shift so quickly, and the best players are able to adapt to that. Sometimes you just don't get the right footing you want. Unrational only has one plate to his name. He'll get a little bit back, but not enough to quell some of the suspicion that he's going to get challenged momentarily. As extra pings come out, frantic ones at that. I think Scummin, yeah, saw a player and one on the rotation and finally finds Joe. Okay. 
So gonna go down for the count here. Gary's yeah, setting it up come here, come here, come here. as a little bit of a wall going down here, adding some extra cover. Just so slow down his gameplay. Looking on the bottom left hand side of your screen, you notice that Scum is not doing too healthy. Neither is yeah. Knight. So Gary has to play that little bit of an anchor role. Kind of what we saw a little bit earlier with uh, DZ squad being able to change out once in a while. That's going to be Smixy down for the count. Back into cover. He knows. He can't overextend. He can't over push this. He's going to just play it slow. Wait for his team to get back up. And get back in the mix. Oh, that's tough. Yeah, you, look, you're taking two gunfights at a time. One's got a bit of a bunny hop. The other just on a drop shot. It's it's not going to go well. You get a three eliminations to the name of Intex to start. Tough gunfight. Wiz will escape. Somewhere FIFA kills around. Over to Natarsha. And again, another huge three stack, which again, it's very similar for the squad. Bit of cash to work with, and they will elect for the UAV, so early investment. You know, one thing I want to mention real quick now that we're early game is a lot of these teams, you know, there's no real scrims going on for Vondel. There's no real ranked playlist, at least yet, for Vondel. So in a situation like this, there's no real good practice you can get leading up to these tournaments. It kind of just leads down to who performs on that day, right? And so it'll be interesting to see, you know, as the resurgence, you know, evolves, maybe a rank mode, rank mode gets, you know, introduced sure. or we see more tournaments coming into play where these teams can get more reps in in competitive yeah. environments. You know, in pubs, you're just kind of running and gunning. Mm -hmm. Especially just kind of in the restraints you have here in this tournament. Like, the best practice you're getting is against the best of the world. So, like, there's positives and negatives there. The positives are you're getting different looks and different game plans that you're going to have to accommodate for. The negatives are, you know, you might have one bad drop and it's GG's. It just, it, it depends on what happens. But all these players in this lobby, in this tournament, here for a reason. Some of the best you're going to find and. They have put on a show, some putting on a clinic, as we've seen five weeks of action. This is our last week of this tournament, so if you've been enjoying any of it, make sure you go support the streamers currently on your screen. They have been doing some dirty work here on Vondel. Give them some love, everybody involved. But for the moment, Natasha's going to slow her roll. Streaks ring out in the back line, but she sees one or two players in the water and thinking twice about the engagement. I got my gun. Yeah, slowing down the tempo here. And go in and wait for information a player a little bit deeper notice i mean she can take the shot but even if she gets a knock it'll be a little bit more difficult to get the full kill gonna go in and replenish some ammo that ammo crate going set back up we good to go you know some teams you know 16 teams still remaining they're gonna slow it down here a bit a little mm -hmm. bit less than what we saw earlier last time we were going on fourth zone or third closing and going on fourth and still 17 teams remaining so kind of like what we mentioned earlier shift and tempo could kind of be already in play where teams are like starting to slow it down a little bit. Try to work on those placements. Very, very patient and quiet. Sean Jay with Believe in Intex. We've seen them a couple of times in this tournament. Always great to see a friendly face. As this squad has made some late game pushes. They've been able to escape to the end zone a handful of times. They have not found success yet. They have been cleaned up relatively quickly in other instances, but... A slower approach today might spell a much different result. We'll see what they're able to put together. To start, a bit of cash to play with. 20,000 in the bag. And the zone to their back. Okay. ISO 13. And I'm not too sure. I think her primary we're going to see rocked is... It looks like the M13. Now, we I did hear a couple of players talking about this weapon. I personally haven't given it a shot, a fair mm. chance just yet. But, you know, compared to the big map... You can see players get away with different metas, especially when it comes mm -hmm. to your AR, because the map distance you're taking the fights aren't as long as going across the map like somewhere downtown in Amazra. Most of the gunfights are building a building. So you can use a closer range ARs as a substitute to the Cronin and so forth. But speaking about the Cronin, FIFA and the kill feed putting down Believe with the one. Andre, you're going to realize that I'm going to back it up. Well, for you personally, like when a new weapon kind of comes in and shakes up whether the playstyle you usually rock with or the weapon you prefer, do you like to kind of get your hands dirty with it quickly or do you take some time to see how it settles into the meta and then you switch over? Like, what do you like to do? I think for the most part, um, on release, any new weapons I do love to use. Just kind of, it's mm. it's fresh content. It's sure. something new. Um, but I usually give each gun about like three, four days. And whether it's the meta or not, I just like to, you know, get a different feel for weapons. You know, I'll go from the sure. Tac-V to the Cronin. I'm on the Cronin right now. I'll probably shift it up and... Uh, I don't know, the M13 might be a little, might be on my list. <laughs> the Cronin's really good. It'll be interesting to see if the M13 is able to overtake that staple, but 
And a panic for the moment in those comms. So don't worry, Swag will be there for the cleanup. Guardian Angel is in. Nicely done. He got under a minute until Resurgence closes. So teams start to vie for position. Holding on to their spots. They're going to have to worry about Resurgence getting pushed out of the gunfight. And uh, out of the minds of these players. Because right now, you got all you got. 15,000 in the bag. And you got about 15 seconds until you got to keep your numbers up. Here comes a mortar strike. A rather quick game here with 15 teams still remaining. The shots are looking good for Nat, but uh, is she going to be able to push this? I'm going to go ahead and slow it down just a bit. She has nades to work with here. I mean, do you know how close Whenever we need it. Down for the count there. All right, and just like that, Resurgence is disabled. We have a bit of an end game that's going to most likely pull towards the buildings you see here and where kind of Sean just died across the way. Mm -hmm. Going towards Zoo. So we're going to see a bit of a water play here coming in. Oh, I mean, if Joe's still alive, I'm sure he has, <laughs> he's got the FTX siege somewhere on the map. <laughs> I was just thinking that. Like, all right, where's Joe-O? Uh, production, where is Joe-O? There he is. There he is. <laughs> Perfect timing. Of course he's near the water. Let's see the secondary. Let's see the secondary. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it says FB5. Okay, okay. Absolutely wonderful. One around, it's going to be bread, man. Not off on the island, what we expected, whether it was a sniper or the crone in his hands. This time around, we'll be stacking, pulling a page out of Natarsha's playbook. Three stacking danger in the comms, one pushing around the opposite side. They're going to have to swing out dangerously and throw those shoulders at the gunfight. They do so. Bradman finds one. There's that f -tack siege being used in the water. 21 Savage now down for the count as Intex falls. Not a team wipe, though, so looking for one more. Joe unbelievably cracked, even shooting his own teammate. No one's safe here, Joe. He also has an extra self in his back pocket. There it is. Drop it over to his teammate. He's not used to having his teammates with him in this spot. He's just not sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting spot to be in, but also a dangerous one, right? Like, if we get back to bases here, like, this is great to have a stack, but it also means if you get spotted, I mean, you got really no exit strategy other than try to smoke the cross and escape. Get on foot. Three eliminations. Natasha up top. Letting shots ring out. She will get way too tagged for a re-engage. Inno and Zepti close behind, not challenging for the moment. But she's getting pinched from the back. This is a tough spot to be in for this trio. I'm going to throw some snakes in there. Not a pinch between two teams, like you mentioned. Iceman Isaac, pilot in his clan tag, letting the lobby know if there's a heli near. Don't pop your parachute. You better hit the floor. He's going to get some chops down. One elimination right now has a cast off in hand. That's all. Everyone we've hopped on board with has had a different AR to work with. Mm -hmm. Love to see it. And notice how him and his squad are a bit spread out just a little bit. Brax gonna fall down, Trix. This is no Brax, excuse me. Brax gonna fall down and Empathy not looking too healthy. Yeah. Hopefully get some plates going on. Smoke's gonna come into play for Isaac. He's gonna try to get the res here going off and that's big. Mm, he gets it. That's big. And it's now you escape. Get up, get out. Rule number one of taking a gunfight. And they can hear the pinch happening. Sean Jay back into the play. Intex alive with only two plates to his name. And things very much come down to a crawl. So I think in this spot, I mean, Lucky, if you have height game, like if you're Natasha or you have the team behind them, whoever's pushing them, if you can hold on to that altitude and, and you know, try not to concede it pretty quickly, I mean, you would think that would spell success moving into the end game, but with the way that these games have been playing out today, it seems the players have a different idea. Yeah. Evan and Trey, the last alive for their squad here. Three eliminations for Evan. And Trey so far away. Play Here's a little bit farther. Breadman going to go back into the water with FTX. Each of the last one remaining for his squad. Joe's team is in the top 10. So, I mean, they have to keep at the pace they were originally at. You know, getting good placement kills if they want to keep at it. He's going to have to go for a far left-hand side rotation. Under the umbrella, he goes. And there it is. It's going to pull towards... In a second, uh -huh. yep, the left hand side just in between us and Zoo. Notice if you're watching at home, you'll probably see a lot of reoccurring zones. A lot of more of the experienced players. Hopefully, Knight is still up. Hopefully, called that play out to his team, letting them know play the left hand side of the map. Oh pull. man, no place to work with. Yeah, not much. Zero in a dream, but I mean, Breadman can be sneaky here. And again, like he could just be a nuisance for placement. We've seen this last week when. It was Ahsoka who was able to stay alive and just kind of skate through to top three. We'll use for a decoy, but that's about it. 50 <laughs> seconds to go. 
Zone 6 taking its time, but Breadman really has no avenue to get through. Is he going to be able to get out of this one? He has a smoke and nade to work with. Player directly above him. Anjay still holding on. Has smokes as well to work with. Want to stow those three total. First smoke coming in. It's also going to be a gas grenade. Intex trying to go for the far right-hand side of rotation. He's going to get run into Biffle, who seems to be making a zone play. Sean Jay trying to make it in the water. If that's Breadman, though, it's going to be a difficult fight. The punches are coming in. Breaking armor to turn and burn. Not much you can do. <laughs> Breadman with the pistol. It's at least info. I mean, look, at the end of the day, it's a tough gun fight to take against Breadman alone. He can be a nuisance. You get info here. Natasha, worry about players from the back. They've been up here for quite some time. Now they'll make their moves. Zepi will lead the charge. And he falls. All right. Well, that was a quick experiment and quick result. There go the smokes. There goes Natasha. Inno is down as well. She's the only one alive for the trio, and she is tagged and about to be bagged if she's not careful. To stay alive here. Six teams remaining. I believe Diaz is going to be on the left-hand side here. He took out Zepi. Nat, no plates to work with. MP5 in hand. We are in seven zone closing, so it's starting to get a little bit smaller. Both teams, probably a team, two teams across, team of the water, team above her inside the building. Yep, that's going to be Shifty. Last alive for the squad. Hurricane in hand, not his weapon of choice, but if it's Shifty, he's going to be able to do it. Oh One my. squad down. Can he do three? Not going to be able. Sixth place. And still. As it moved to muscle, back on board with Evan. Trying to do what he can as the last remaining for his squad. Yeah, it's tough. When you, you get one gunfight, then you get three more rushing you. It's not uh, it's not ideal. Evan, in clutch time, is one of the best clutch players. Can he do it here? Z colors down. Swag out. Yeah, yeah, and he has to get out of the gas. Comps coming in from Trey Lim. No, any elimination will help here. If you're not able to close it out, the Good shots are trying to look clean. It's going to... Nice. Going to be Isaac Braxton uh, Empathy closing out. I think they had 20 eliminations. Yep. We'll end with 20. That is a team that was, again, fighting a couple of different trios at once, but they skate through some of the chaos and a very different end game here. We saw, again, the investment in the high ground worked just for positioning, GG's worked for placement, GG's. or reflections. A, a different end result in game number six. Uh, Empathy, Iceman Isaac, and Brax are the ones who come out on top, and they keep at bay some of the heavy hitters. Hey, solid ending.